you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. Hey, we're certainly appreciative of you tuning in. We certainly appreciate it. Oh, my gosh. Another show. We've got a really amazing show with an, a really amazing new startup company. Well, they're not new anymore. Uh, maybe they are. I don't know. They're, they're killing it. They're killing it, I say. And so we're going to be talking to them today. To watch the video version of this, go to youtube.com for just Chris Voss. Hit the bell notification button. Refer all the show to your friends, neighbors, relatives. Get them to subscribe on iTunes and all the different syndications platforms. Go to goodreads.com for just Chris Voss. See what we're reading over there. Go to uh, all the Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, and Instagram groups as well. Today, we have two amazing people on the show with us. One gentleman I've known for several years. He is part of a group called Good Fair. And we have the founder and CEO, Topper Luciani, with us, and my good friend, Ryan Merquette. And this episode is brought to you by a sponsor, ifi-audio.com and their micro idsd signature it's a top of the range desktop transportable dac and headphone app that will supercharge your headphones it has two brown burr dac chips in it and will decode high-res audio and mqa files we're using it in the studio right now i've loved my experience with it so far it just makes everything sound so much more richer and better and takes things to the next level ifi audio is an award-winning audio tech company with one aim in mind to improve your music enjoyment of quality sound eradicate noise distortion and hiss from your listening experience Check out their new incredible lineup of DACs and audio enhancement devices at ifi-audio.com. And Ryan, what's your title over there these days? Yeah, I'm head of products and engineering for Good Fair. There you go. There you go. So welcome to the show, guys. Give us uh, the .com for where people can find out more about Good Fair. Goodfair.com, G-O-O-D-F-A-I-R.com. There you and go. <laughs> we'll tell you the story in a little bit, but I... Found the domain, just random, a guy in Russia just had it randomly. Mm -hmm. Vlad? Was it Vlad? Yeah, something like that. It's always Vlad. Vlad's always got it. <laughs> it's always Vlad. It's always they Vlad. just put like two fun English words together and bought the domain. Good fair. So <laughs> give us both your bios and rundowns because I know you guys have uh, incredible experience in this uh, in tech business, if you will. Ryan first, please. Me? Sure, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was uh, born in Texas. I was always uh, kind of a hacker growing up. And yeah, I decided that I was going to get really good at reverse engineering software, which is basically when you install software, it asks you for your name and serial number or 30-day limit or something like that. And I would tear it apart with different software tools and figure out how the inner workings would work and then reverse engineer it so I could use it forever. So that, that was basically my, my high school and middle school growing up. I just was infatuated with uh, reverse engineering software. It's kind of nerdy, I know. But now I'm in a fashion company. Uh, it's, <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, and so I ended up going to an HBCU to get my undergrad done. It's called St. Phillips College in San Antonio. And then transferred to a four-year university called Oklahoma Wesleyan, which is a Christian liberal arts university. My dad's a pastor. And so, and so, you know, it felt important for me to be close to, you know, strong ideals and things like that and values. And so that's, that's and ultimately what I did. I went to school there and luckily I met my wife, who's now my, she was my girlfriend at the time, my beautiful wife. And, you know, we have two amazing children together. We're in Austin, but, you know, through that, I ended up getting a job out in the Bay Area and moving out to Berkeley right after school and working at a small startup up called dot spotter that ended up getting acquired about six months after i joined it was totally the silicon valley episode of like you know you move out to the valley join a startup get acquired and then assimilate the teams together and all that awkwardness of like hey i'm an engineer cool i'm an engineer are you taking my job and then you know eventually that was cbs interactive who bought us out which is you know cbs.com and cnet they eventually bought cnet too and they kind of threw us into the CNET building with the rest of those folks. And it was just really awkward for a while. But anyway, I ended up going to Facebook in 2009 and helping them launch the Facebook platform and the blue login button you see all over the internet. So I apologize for that. <laughs> 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 so I'm really sorry. Uh, that was part of 
part of my team. And so for pins, I left Facebook and started my own company about a year after I joined. It was pretty obvious that I needed to go do my own thing. And so I've always been an entrepreneur and operator. And so three months after I left Facebook, I launched a company at TechCrunch Disrupt in New York. It was the first New York TechCrunch uh, Disrupt. We ended up losing to Hotel Tonight and Betterment, but it was a really good experience. The company is called App Bistro and we had some really great investors. We ended up taking two rounds and then got um, acquired by an Indian um, unicorn called Inmobi who had just raised a bunch of money from SoftBank. And so we uh, taking my company there for two years and we ended up getting acquired by them. I was there for two years as director of product. And then, sorry, my, my, my mind is ahead of my mouth right now. I'm, I just want <laughs> I just want to talk really fast, but I didn't remember I'm on a podcast. And so anyway, uh, long story short, there I had spent 14 trips to, to India to integrate my software into their team and, and to their software. And it was just, a, it, was, it was a crazy time. And then after my earn out, I went to Reddit and was there for, as their product manager, I was there for a while and helped them integrate really tasteful ads across the platform. And then I got whispered to go to Amazon. And so long story short, Amazon's what brought me back to Texas. And in that role, I was mentoring startups and startup founders for AWS. And it was a really amazing role, an amazing, just an amazing amount of people and the team at Amazon were incredible. And that, that's what brought me back to, to Austin to kind of do that role in Austin to help the Austin ecosystem mentor, kind of like a paid mentor for, for Amazon. And you know, through that, that's how I got actually got connected to Good Fair. And one of our mentor t- top, uh, mentors and advisors of the company was actually a good friend of mine. And toppers as well. And so put us in touch and yeah, the rest is history. I just fell in love with the mission and what we were building and, you know, the culture and then, you know, it's just topper. I mean, topper is a, a, an amazing dude. I mean, the more you get so to are know you. Him, hey, on. stop it. The more you get to know him, the more you just, he's just a great dude. And so like, it was just, I wanted to be part of it. And I saw like the, the mission, like the problem and like, we'll get into the problem, but it is just massive, you know, oil and gas, you know, it's the, you know, clothing waste is the second, is the second highest polluter behind oil and gas. And so, you know, if we can get even a small dent in this problem, it's my life's work. Right. And so there's all this cool jobs I've had before, but nothing really matters if, you know, we're all boiling to death in 80 years. Right. So, so yeah, if to me, this is my life's work and I can't be more excited to be part of this team and driving this, this, this mission forward. So there you go. And if you're watching this on YouTube right now, you see that Ryan spends his days uh, on a beach with waves <laughs> yeah. crashing yeah. up against the yeah, I wish. <laughs> I'm in my home office right now. But Topper, with what we have left of the show, I think it's about five minutes. Give us yeah. your bio so we can find yo, more yo. about you. <laughs> we so, love you, Ryan. Basically, I've been in uh, I've been in the used clothing space for the past ten or twelve years. I first started off selling used neckties on eBay, and then uh, my name was the Emperor of Thailand, and I became eBay's number one Thai seller. And then basically I thought there was an opportunity to sell vintage online. So I put, I made this, did a, did a startup called Nifty Thrifty where I was just pushing vintage, but I ultimately just couldn't launch failure to launch baby. So I, uh, just experimented and experimented and experimented. And I realized that selling mystery thrift was the opportunity and, mm-hmm. and branding it through the lens of sustainability was was the opportunity to really scale. So I moved from New York City to Houston. I had no money. I partnered with a textile recycler that, that kind of helped me, not for equity, but just kind of uh, gave me a little bit of uh, credit and terms to like pay him and help me set up shop in his little where in his giant warehouse. He gave me a back closet. So I had a $600 a month studio apartment in Houston and I was able to ship orders out of a back closet of a textile recycler. And from that, I was able to raise some money and I was able to build the team and, and all of these blessings that have kind of happened in the last two or three years because of the consumer demand around this and around, you know, the, the tailwinds around sustainability. This is crazy, man. And so you guys, you guys come up with this concept and you know, this is stuff that would normally get thrown away or put in landfills. Good for us. Yeah. A lot of it, basically what happens is a lot of it gets exported to developing countries. And what happens is after a month or two of not being able to sell some of this stuff, they're making such a fat margin on the goods that the stuff that they don't want to sell or can't sell, they just throw in a landfill or dispose yeah. of it in other ways, incinerate it. So, so let's talk about what Good Fair does. How, what, what do you guys do specifically? <laughs> so we're an online thrift store that sells mystery bundles of mm. first apparel through selling by category. So ultimately, if you come to the website and you want 
a used flannel shirt. Well, we don't sell one flannel shirt. We're going to sell you a, we're going to sell you four flannel shirts for 25 bucks and you just tell us your size. And so that so we vet by quality and we we sort separate everything by size. And and so you've got kind of the thrill of the excitement of a mystery, but also from a business perspective it allows us to scalably sell what's in the waste stream as opposed to cataloging every single piece with clothing that is not valuable enough to, to justify that, that level of investment. Mm-hmm. So you guys are saving it from landfills. And then I think you guys find gems in there from what I understand too as well, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely. Do we Ryan, would you like to <laughs> would you like to speak about the gem? Yeah, I mean like part of the part of the process is when we rip open these bales, like the ones you see behind Topper, <laughs> we see, you know, we find, you know, we categorize the items into vintage, thrift, and discount. And the vintage items are, you know, think about it, they're actually waste. You know, like they're usually the oldest part of the bale there might have a small hole in it or a small tear uh, because it's so old but it's actually the vintage and they're actually worth the most brian i didn't show you this one but since this is fun for a podcast so we found this i found this in the vintage area today it is a t-shirt from a whorehouse and it says mustang Mustang ranch Ranch, where quality keeps them coming and it's from (laughs) 1983 Quality control supervisor of the Mustang. <laughs> Quality control. Oh my gosh! I think what I think what made me excited was Ryan was telling us about how you know you can find like old cool T-shirts like Metallica. I'm a big Metallica. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so like, uh, oh, I, we pulled out a freaking Iron Maiden t-shirt from 1983. Let me. I'm just gonna grab that. Go okay. grab it. Go grab right, it. Yeah. Go grab yeah. it. Yeah. So I yeah, I mean. But think about it, like these t-shirts are the ones that, so from our suppliers are the textile recyclers. And what they're doing is buying from the Goodwill and Salvation Armies who get so many donations on the weekends. They just throw it all into a semi-truck, ship it to Houston. And then our suppliers get the raw donations, categorize it for us, put them into the bales. And then they don't understand that an Iron Maiden shirt from 83 is worth $250, $300. $500. $500. Holy yeah. crap. Wow, so it's incredible. I got to go through my incredible. concert t-shirts I own. You sure do. Oh, look at that. Yeah, there's Eddie. Eddie. Oh, you know who you know Eddie. Oh, I'm a yeah, I went to Iron Maiden I think in 84, 89. What was it? It was either it was I I know I went to the one with the pyramids on it, Power Slave. But I think I went to the one before that. I've been to a couple different Iron Maiden ones, yeah. Yeah, maybe. It's awesome. Well, maybe we'll, maybe we'll send this shirt to you, Chris. <laughs> maybe not. We'll see. <laughs> 500 bucks. All right. <laughs> At least I, yeah. I mean, I'm going through Miles' stuff, man. I got a 1984 Van Halen shirt. I mean, that's the last two. That's ever, very wow. Yeah. That's yeah. legit. I could probably Diamond Dave. <laughs> so, Diamond so Dave Nord, Nordstrom's reached out and they're like, "Hey, can we put some of your vintage stuff on our website?" And we were like, "Yeah, absolutely." We did a test order. 200 items gone less than two hours. Wow. They doubled it. 400 gone six hours. So now we're in six of their stores and we're, we keep getting larger and larger POs from them. Uh, and then you have to remember, this is our waste. It's yeah. the waste from America. That's just so valuable. Now it's going to a Nordstrom's, right? So it's yeah. incredible. And it just shows the demand for this stuff. So yeah. It's, it's is awesome. part of it because of like fashion. Yeah. You know, I, I remember, I remember when we started having this thing where we, I think we owned a store called Cool Cats and they would, and they would have like ripped jeans and i'm like do we we paid for these they're like fucking ripped and they're like no that's how they want them and you're just like <laughs> really and yeah so it's crazy do you who's who's a large part of your customer base that goes to your website and buys other than the big chains is it is it people that are you know they're 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 really into recycling and things along those or they're looking for collector's items or who's usually that person yeah i would say it's a mixture of that i mean like we it's a lot of younger folks obviously mm-hmm. i mean like there is a direct impact on climate change when you buy from us because we, this is literally one step from a landfill and not to segue but we just had a container of pakistani crewnecks come in basically because you know we want to save these things from they end up in a landfill and so if we can save them and it's you know way cheaper to to to, to get it from Pakistan, we'll do it too, right? We'll get it from all over the globe as long as it's within our mission. And so, yeah, I mean, like for us, it's it's all about, you know, the mission and, and you know, yeah, it's, it's 4.30 and we've been on calls all day and my brain is a little fried right now. But uh, yeah. It's okay, Ryan. We'll carry you through, man. We'll carry Thanks, you through. man. Appreciate, I do, man. appreciate we'll it. Appreciate We'll keep you laughing. We'll keep the juices going. <laughs> and suck down some coffee there. We got you here. We won't go too much longer. So, <laughs> but there's money in this too. I mean, that's the really cool thing. You guys... 
that, you know, from the way Ryan described it to us, you guys basically turned a textile, you know, kind of an old world, so crap sort of uh, product to into a tech company, really. And then there's money in this. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, the margins are incredible. I mean, if you think about it, we're taking waste and selling it as a premium. So, you know, it's a, it's a great business model you know, on top of it. You know, it's, it's actually doing something for the earth. And I keep going to that. Cause like, it's so important. My seven-year-old Charlie said, you know, dad, I'm proud of you. And I'm like, well, why? And he's like, because you're doing something for climate change. And I'm like, how old are you? How do you, like, but it was just like, I got the goosebumps, you know, I was like, wow, this is actually really cool. Awesome. Like we're doing something. So you got to enjoy that way you can. Cause once you hit the teens, you know, then you never know. <laughs> right. No, he's like, give me I'm the sure credit card. Good yeah, he's good. <laughs> I hate you, Dad. Give me the credit card. Give me the card keys. <laughs> anyway, you know, they go through that t- teenage thing. But no, this is really cool. So what's the future of Good Fair that you guys see coming? And do you want to talk about some of the numerical numbers, the throw at people, the uh, wave around success? Well, we're <laughs> he's doing... asking for revenue numbers, I think. No, well, I figured we're... you guys could brag a little bit if you we're want. Doing eight, <laughs> we're doing eight figures, and we basically – are growing really, really fast. Tripled, and, tripled last year's numbers. So, yep. Um, and Ryan was telling us you just got like a, I think a new warehouse, and so I mean, this is the cool thing. You know, a lot of people don't get into this business. A lot of people probably dismissed it for so many years. And went, yeah, there's, there's no money in uh, digging stuff out of landfills. Yeah, 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 there's nothing there. And you guys, have, you guys have found this perfect little niche that probably not a lot of too many people are excited to get into, but it makes money. It saves the world. And it sounds like a lot of these new, this new generation, they're very concerned about that sort of thing. And so you guys are, you guys are hitting on all cylinders basically. And now you guys are getting picked up by, you know, these big retailers and I guess margins are great for everybody at that point. Mm -hmm. Topper, do you want to give the Chris Foss audience, the vision, the big vision? Yeah, so without, ult- without giving away too much, obviously. Yeah, so ultimately, the thrift industry is growing at six percent a year, which is significantly faster than traditional retail. Wow! And we see a dream that we are a vision for Good Fair is well beyond adult apparel. We see a world where Good Fair is disrupting Amazon one day when mm. people are wanting to shop secondhand before they're shopping new. And the bottom line is, you've got companies or nonprofits like Goodwill and Salvation Army. That are already doing five billion dollars in revenue, so we're not reinventing any wheel or creating any consumer demand. It's all the demand is already there. We're just facilitating it with you know making it easy on the web, and so our goal is to is to be selling far beyond apparel. You know, kids' clothing, footwear, how, housing and home goods, soft goods, hard goods, and then eventually get into sporting equipment tools all the things that are in the waste stream there's an opportunity for good fair to sell mm-hmm. that's that's a brilliant vision because i remember i we used to just go dump everything at, at like the up here in utah it's the desert industries that's run by the mormon church but it's basically their local goodwill in vegas there was always the goodwill we used to be we just go dump anything with them and now they have like people there that are like yeah we're not taking that and yeah we're not taking that like, i'm like when did you guys get too good for crap like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it got isn't that your job? Yeah, isn't that your job? You're supposed to take the. You're supposed to take my crap. In fact, uh, I mean, I used to, I used to love going down in the middle of the night and just dumping stuff and leaving. Yeah. But the the local desert industries here, they've got all gated off. You can't go in there and just dump shit anymore. Like they're they're like mm. really high minded about it. Like I'm sorry, but your crap is not good enough for our goodwill. <laughs> like, uh, That's crazy. So I, you know, like you guys uh, said, it's there's so much overrun and all this sort of good stuff going on. So this is this is pretty exciting because I think there's more of a use case for us. And you know, we need to we need to reuse stuff more often. I mean, I do all, I do all my dating secondhand. So there's that. You know, we need to recycle stuff. Although I don't know, my my friends are always like, you should get a dog at the at the at the uh, dog adoption clinic and i always go did you get your kids at the adoption clinic first <laughs> uh, if so i'll get my dog and see how that works but, but no man uh, this is a good thing it's good for the environment it's good for the world and hopefully it'll make us think maybe more about how much stuff we create and i imagine cyclically or cyclical through yeah. the system this might make less new things being made less consumption of new goods trees fabric. that's our goal our goal is yeah. really to reframe the conversation around around consumption mm-hmm. that we don't need so much new stuff all the time yeah i remember the the movie from was a fight club mm-hmm. where we, we buy stuff to impress people that 
Don't give yeah, a crap that about you don't like or yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Mm-hmm. So as as we go out, anything more you guys want to talk about? Yeah, I don't know. We're just building an amazing company. We have a, a great team. We have you know, we have a leadership team that's I mean, in, insanely just working their butts off. Let's just put it that way. And then we have a warehouse team that is just you know, burning it on both ends, you know, working nights and weekends. And, you know, we're just, the mission. We're, we're all committed to this mission. And, you know, it's 20, 30 employees in the office, another 50 in the warehouses. And, you know, this is just day one. We keep saying it over and over again, day one. And, you know, we're trying to build a generational defining brand. And and if we're even just, just a sliver successful at that, we're going to have an impact on climate change and really that's that's what all this is for and you know we're building a big business in the process and that's awesome but if we're just slightly successful in our first goal then that's what it's all about so and and i think it's really cool you guys have turned this into a tech business basically (laughs) (laughs) well there's a lot of tech to go here i mean like we're automation in the warehouse we're we're innovating and you know a lot of the bundles think about like all of everything on our site is a bundle so we really had to like think of like how can we do inventory planning, forecasting, inventory restructuring, and all that stuff through Shopify by using bundles. And like, you know, it, it was a, it's just, it's complicated, right? And so like, we had to put a lot of IP into it. So there's a lot of tech that's really yeah. enabling this to scale. And we think, you know, we're, we're going to be going out for a series A soon. And, you know, part of that capital infusion will be, you know, using technology to really optimize our costs to really unlock the margin even more if that's even possible. But, you know, there's a lot of margin you know, still on the table to be had. That's for maybe, sure. Maybe you guys can have like AI machines that will figure out which, which ones are the Metallica <laughs> shirts and all that stuff. <laughs> Don't give away our roadmap. Chris. Oh, there you go. Well, <laughs> me and Robert Scove, we talk a lot, you know, he, he never shuts up about AI. So <laughs> I have That's to right. hear about it all the time, but uh, no, this is really guy- nice guys. I think this is really brilliant. Like I said, Ryan came into our clubhouse room and just blew up the room. Everyone just sat around and went, what you do? What? And they just, they just were crazy about it. So they were, they were excited to see this interview and hear it. And I'm sure people that aren't aware of it will check it out as well. Tell people where to go on the website to uh, find more out about you guys. Yeah. So I mean, it's goodfair.com. There's an about us section you can click on. You can also follow Topper on Twitter. He's got a tweeter. I got it one too. too. Topper, just search for Topper. What's your top? What's your Twitter? Topper topper? JL. Topper there JL. Mine's just my last name. So find us on the on the sure. interwebs. We're trying to do more clubhouses. If you can get Topper into a clubhouse, I'm sure he'd love to come, love to chat for for a while in there. But, but yeah, we were just trying to get the word out. We've been so heads down just building the business that we don't, you know, we don't do a lot of these podcasts or interviews just because it's, you know, we have a call in 30 minutes with a, a guy in the West Coast. We just had one right. We were late because we had a VC call. So we're just so in the weeds that, you know, we don't get enough chances to talk about what we're truly building. And yeah. And most people think when they think good fair, they think, oh, they're just going into a thrift store and getting something off the shelf and then selling it to us. Like that's the complete opposite of what we're doing. You know, there is no, no, no. The, to be t- fully transparent, there are times we have to do that, right? To like get an order out the door. Like we just don't have that crew neck. Let's go get it off a, a retailer's shelf. And that does happen, full transparency. But that's probably like less than 1% of our items in the warehouse mm-hmm. so um, that we ship out. So anyway, that's good fair. And it's a really cool story. And I just want more and more people to, to know about what we're up to. And, you know, we're not going anywhere and we're going to get bigger and bigger. And hopefully in that process, you know, we can have a sizable impact on the, on the climate. So. And what was really cool was I looked up your guys' TikTok. Mm-hmm. Holy mother of Judas. Oh, we didn't tell you the story. Uh, oh, man. We, we have time? How much time? Yeah, we, we, we got plenty of time. I was just okay. To... All right. Well, yeah. So Topper, when when I started, we were an Instagram, Facebook only kind of shop. And that, was, that, that did great for us. Still does great for us. But then I randomly just didn't. I think I told. I didn't tell anybody. I don't think. I just changed the thank you page uh, to say, hey, we love seeing, you know, your, your TikTok unboxing videos. Because there was some apprehension internally to go to TikTok because we were such, we were doing so good on Instagram. I had no idea what it was. Yeah, we didn't know what it was. Like, we were I like, still don't. And so I was like, well, let's just try it. Maybe someone will do a video and it will go viral. Maybe that's how it works. And so we, we kind of just left it alone. And, you know, a couple, couple months, a month or two later, we started getting a bunch of organic traffic in and we were like, where's that coming from? We thought it was Instagram. We thought it was maybe word of mouth. We weren't sure. And then one weekend, it was a Friday. I remember it was the Easter, the Easter, right as the quarantine was setting in, everyone was like, okay, this is going to be 
awful for the next year probably and it was that friday i remember we usually were getting about a couple hundred bucks in revenue an hour 500 bucks or something and it just shot up like in one hour we were looking at like twelve thousand dollars an hour and then like you know it, we kept hitting refresh up to like thirty thousand forty thousand fifty thousand i was like what is going on and like it turns out some video from a mom in south carolina what was her name i don't know we'll have to put it in the show notes i'll give i'll give you her tiktok we have to give her some love she shana i want to say anyway she she ended up you know watching this or putting on that video out and it went super viral that weekend and we basically did our seed round through customer revenue in like three days uh, there was so much demand it was like almost it was like six hundred thousand in like a week or something yeah 200 it was 230 in a day yeah it was insane and so that was really what put us on the map you know that was march or actually april of that year you know and we just started scaling from then on out. You know, we, we raised the seed and put the right people in the right place, hired an amazing leadership team an amazing, you know, operations team, warehouse team. And it's just been off to the races ever since. And it's been an incredible journey. I mean, we have fun every time. Like I, I can't wait to get up in the morning and like get on the calls with everybody. It's just so fun. You know, like, like on Mondays when people join our weekly call, we, we, I, I join first and I'll put it, I'll put some music on. <laughs> like, like I think we had like, you know, some Kanye a couple weeks ago. And then this week we had Whitney, Whitney Houston. Houston. <laughs> I want to dance with somebody, you know, and that whole, everyone's all dancing in their zoom, you know, and it's just, you know, the culture that we're building is the, the culture I've always dreamed of working at. And I know it's it's culture Mm -hmm. toppers always dreamed of being a part of. And so we're really selective about who we hire on a culture basis. So our interview process is, you know, down pat, we ask very culture specific questions and then we're quick to let people go. Like if you're not working out, like, like, unfortunately, like we have to make hard decisions quickly in this business. And so that's, that's part of the game. And, you know, and, and so we're, we're quick to let people go and to make sure we're building the right team early on to really make sure that we're all on the same page. We're all on the same mission. So it's, uh, and it's been so much fun, Chris, man, this, I can't tell you how much fun Topper and I've had. And like, I haven't even barely seen the dude. I'm in, I'm in Austin. He's in Houston. So yeah. I come to the warehouse maybe once a week, but like our whole team is pretty much virtual except for the warehouse folks in Topper. And so it's been really fun just building a whole virtual company really over the last you know whatever we're in the the virus you know covid was that a necessity with the virus then yeah i mean it was it was forced upon us our our original plan was to open an office in austin on 7th street or sorry 6th street Street, yes 6th street (laughs) but not in like the party section like down on the east side where it's a little bit more chill actually you were there chris remember that Mm -hmm. house we went to with who who was the guy we were with remember the last one we went to south by southwest there was a house and had a dj in the back and and that house was the one we were going to rent that was in our business plan to rent that house make it the good fair house and so and we were going to have events there and invite the university students and like have a lot of like on-brand mess like just events like all kinds of cool stuff south by south southwest part all, all that stuff and then the, the the freaking covid happened and so then we had to re- like change our whole business plan to be a digital first company digital first you know brand we were going to do we were going to send a, some college kids out to all the festivals with good fair merch and set up tables and, you know, have a real, like, what is it? Sorry, it's going to late, but having like a, like a foot, like a, like a on ground type of marketing strategy. And, you know, that was completely reversed. We went all digital. So, yeah. And we haven't done, yeah, we haven't done anything on like with events yet. So, so this would be interesting when you guys do, right? Like something at South by Southwest when it, when they have a, you know, or like Coachella, like having Coachella? like a bit, yeah. And like, oh god, those people at Coachella, man, those those chicks would love those clothes. You know, <laughs> all the yep. hip, all the hipster sort of chicks. You know, they they love to dress up when they go there, and they always look kind of hipsters. Yeah, but yeah. Seventy seven point four million likes on TikTok, three three hundred seventy three point four million followers. You guys had this rabid following of people just making all these crazy funny videos about your brand. That is just yeah. awesome. It's man, it's a good feeling. This it's a awesome. really, really good feeling. It's, it's, I think, Topper, it's important for us to sit back and look at it because it's, <laughs> we're so in it, you know, and like to Never sit back. Enough. Like we just had, we had a conversation with some VCs and they were like, oh, our son told us about you. We were like, <laughs> what? Like, that's amazing, you know? And like, we're still waiting for that random Good Fair shirt in the wild. I haven't seen one yet. I think Topper hasn't seen one either, but it's going to happen. We're already seeing our Good Fair stuff. Like, oh, I forgot to tell you, we're screen printing Good Fair 
on blank t-shirts and putting that mm. into the mix as well. And that's helping with word of mouth. So like Topper's example there, he's wearing a good fair screen printed shirt. And so, you know, we're, so that gets out there. So if you search on like, you know, Poshmark or any of these other sites that sell, you know, thrift stuff, you'll find good fair stuff for sale, like a $30 sweatshirt. But to us was, you know, a couple bucks to make. So it's just Jeez. incredible. It's incredible. I mean, the market... We're building a whole revolution. <laughs> it's amazing. Markup's almost better than, you know, building, making something new and doing it almost. It I don't is know. Is oh, it, it is, is better. better. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's better. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. hilarious. You gotta love it. <laughs> but you know, it's I, good too, right? It's like a perfect business model and we're doing something good for the earth. It's just yeah. like, wow, can it get any better? You know? So that's that's amazing. Yeah. You know, I I had uh, my good friend uh, Kara Golden, the CEO of Hint Water, on the show with her new book I Love Hint Water. Undaunted. Yeah, Undaunted. It. Yeah, it's good stuff. And so we we're talking kind of the end of the show, we started talking about TikTok. And then after the show for about an hour, we sat and talked about how TikTok. And I'm like, you you really need to get Hint Water and your brand on TikTok. He's like, oh, I don't know, it's for the kids. And you can see like the end of the recording, we started talking about it. And so I talked to her, I says, get on it. And and we, and and I kind of told her how, to, how it kind of works. So I go over there to check the other day and she's like killing it. She's like killing it. She's even bigger than her own brand, Hidden Water. Like Hidden Water's amazing. Doing well, but she's just doing her, you know, her little tips for business and stuff. And people love, you know, her, she's yeah. awesome. So yeah, it's interesting. A whole new generation too that are going to be raised on Good Fair, and wow. you guys will be right there for the ride. I'm not going to throw any shade, but TikTok did steal our content creator, and now she works for TikTok to uh-huh. help other businesses build content. So we were definitely doing something right there. We love you, TikTok. Don't steal our employees. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go well guys thanks for coming on the show and spending some time with us my my uh, the people that ryan came into in our clubhouse like i said we're just blown away they're just like holy crap and the numbers and the, how it makes sense and you're just like it's just one of those things like uh, you just never saw it as like a a big business sort of thing and one that saves the world so this is awesome guys thank you thank you so much chris that was super fun Jim. hey thanks for having us man it's thank you awesome. We'll spread the word, man. We'll get it out. So give us a word. Uh, people can go look you guys up online. We'll take us out. Yeah, goodfair.com is where you can find, you know, where you can buy, you know, the best quality used secondhand clothes. There you go. So. There you go. Save some money. Save the earth. All that good stuff. Uh, thanks, my audience, for tuning in. Uh, go to youtube.com for says Chris Voss. Hit the bell notification button. Go to all our groups on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. Uh, there's even one on TikTok. We're trying to, you know, get our thing on TikTok going there. And also go to goodreads.com for says Chris Voss. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time. Awesome. Thanks, Chris.